one. Good evening and welcome to the Matt Professional Academy Spring Virtual Open House. My name is Barb Coakley and I'm the director here at the Met and I'm going to get us started off today. Thanks for joining us. And we're also going to hear from um, our Met instructors as well as current Met students and some of our alumni. And then at the end, uh, we will go ahead and answer any questions. So throughout the presentation, if you'd like to put any questions um, in the chat room, please do so, and then we will make sure to address those questions at the end. So let me start out by telling you a little bit about the Met Professional Academy and what drives us. So we are part of a larger national network known as CAPS, Center for Advanced Professional Studies. And this is an innovative program model that focuses in on five guiding principles. And the first principle is profession-based uh, learning. So we focus in on authentic projects um, that students can work on while they're here that our industry partners uh, develop for us or work with us on and provide to us. So you're able to take uh, the content that you learn in each, in each of our strands and apply it to different projects that you're going to work on here at the Met. The second principle that we focus on is a professional skills development. So in addition to learning um, your content within each of the strands, you're also going to have the opportunity um, to build skills that you're going to need regardless to what career path you're going to take. Those things like public speaking, being able to um, collaborate, communicate effectively, critically think, are um, all areas that we focus in on at the Met and give you the opportunity to practice and improve on. Next, um, we spend a good amount of time doing some exploration within career pathways. So not your typical research a career path that you're interested in, but you get to have a mentor within the particular career pathway that you're interested in and ask them firsthand what it's like. Job shadow with them to see what it's like and really get an idea if this is the career path that you do want to move into after you um, graduate high school and, and then potentially college. The fourth kind of guiding principle that we focus in on here at the mat is what we call our entrepreneurial mindset. So instructors are going to create an environment where creative thinking and problem solving are encouraged. We're not going to always um, ask you to memorize things and regurgitate that information, but we're going to give you opportunities to look at different scenarios, have discussions, um, and determine um, the best way to move forward, which is, again, uh, what you're going to experience in uh, your career pathway. And finally, um, we focus on being responsive and flexible. So we have um, a lot of industry partners on our advisory board, as well as um, that come in and do different um, public um, guest speaking for us in the classroom and help set the direction um, in these particular strands to make sure that we're always relevant and current with the data that we're providing for our students. So that's a little bit about um, the programming. Now let me uh, share with you what we're going to be offering in the upcoming school year for 2021-22. So we're going to have four strands, our medical engineering, technology, and bioscience strands, and you'll hear a little bit about those uh, each strand in just a moment. Um, but we have all of these strands for Peoria Unified juniors and seniors who are interested in these areas to come to the MET for a half a day. And those uh, classes are either in the morning, first and second hour, or in the afternoon, fourth and fifth hour. So students um, can either drive themselves from their home school, or we do have transportation from all of our seven high schools. So um, this is all within the school day. So if you have after school extracurricular activities, you're always going to be back on your home campus to meet those um, requirements that you have after school. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Kathy Casney, who is our medical instructor. Good evening, I'm Kathy Casney and I'm the medical strand instructor here at the Met. Um, I currently teach uh, a bio 201, 202 and for GCU as a dual enrollment credit for the medical strand students. Um, and as you can see, we do several different things in this class. We do labs, we do some skills training using medical equipment such as the EKG machine, the ultrasound machine. Um, the students are also certified in healthcare provider CPR and first aid, and they will also be able to use those skills in scenarios and different mock activities that we do where they will use those skills to treat patients. Um, and our program for the medical program is a two year program. The Met Foundations is the first year and that's two class periods and we offer four honors credits for that class. And if they complete it, they for the whole year, they get an advanced biology credit, which fills a high school biology lab class. There's also the potential to earn up to eight dual credits for that class in the first year. As second year students, they also earn four honors credits for the high school and are able to earn up to eight dual enrollment credits through Grand Canyon University. We work hand in hand with GCU and our students that maintain a 3.25 GPA are eligible for the STEM scholar tuition waiver. So all of those, high, those dual enrollment credits through GCU are free tuition as long as they maintain that 3.25 GPA. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to one of our uh, medical students. Madeline, go ahead and take it away. Hi guys, my name is Madeline. I'm a second year medical student and I'll be talking about my experience and how I've done things here at the Met. Uh, the Met has provided many opportunities for us, one of them being that we go to many healthcare facilities. We've gone to cancer treatment centers, dental hygiene labs, podiatry labs, suture labs, and cadaver labs. Uh, we went to a, a dental hygiene lab where we were actually able to have models and we were able to clean them as if, as if they were cavities. So if you guys are interested in dental hygiene, you guys are able to have like a little bit of experience and insight in that. We also get many guest speakers which give us insights into their careers. Even if you may not know if you're interested in that career, you get a bit more of an insight. We also get internships as second years, which is when we basically have, uh, we follow a healthcare uh, field that you may be interested in, but unfortunately due to COVID this year, we weren't able to have our internship at second years, but we were able to have our mentorship program, which is when we have a healthcare provider uh, that we are interested in their career and we talk to them and they help us and basically guide, uh, guide us into um, like and they explain how their job was, how they got into college, what steps they took. And my mentor is a trauma nurse and she's explained to me how how she did college, the classes that she took, and she's basically been guiding me and helping me with how to get in college and stuff. Uh, the Met is also very hands on. So as Ms. Kasney explained, we, we do get CPR certified, which is really good in case of any emergency. We also do many labs. As you can see in the right hand bottom corner, we did a lab dissection, which is which was for our skeletal unit, which was really cool because you really do get to use what you learned and apply it and see it in person. And then um, the left hand corner, Ms. Kasney was teaching us how to do an ultrasound, which was also really interesting. And we learned how to do di uh, injections, sorry. We learned how to do injections and it's all really hands on. But now I'm gonna pass it on to one of my uh, classmates, Sylvia, and she's gonna introduce you guys to the engineering strand. Hi, my name is Sylvia Lopez. I'm a second year engineering student. Um, and very similarly to the, med uh, the medical strand, the engineering strand has two years. Um, during each of those years, uh, you'll come to the Met for two class periods per semester and earn a total of four honors credits for each year. Um, additionally, in your first year, you'll earn a physics lab credit, which will count for a physics class at your home school. 
Uh, and in our second year, we do like to do internships and externships in order to get students out into the field and experience what the true engineering uh, careers would be like. Uh, so, but overall during those two years, we focus a lot on SOLIDWORKS and computer assisted design softwares, understanding how to use them, becoming fluent with them. Um, also mathematical modeling in MATLAB and Excel, which are not only used uh, in college and in class, but also in the field. Um, so it's really important to become proficient in those um, softwares. And then uh, we also have we also participate in ASU's EPICS competition, uh, which is really unique about MET. Um, EPICS stands for Engineering Projects and Community Service, and essentially it allows students to choose a problem within their community that they feel passionately about and spend a year working with a team who is similarly passionate and work towards creating and engineering a solution. And towards the end of this year, you're able to implement your solution and see it work for the people that you made it for. Uh, so that's a really cool journey and it's incredibly valuable uh, I found as a second year and already I've been able to work with uh, several community partners, uh, our business partners like TYR Tactical. This year um, in my EPICS project we're working with them to produce uh, four different um, prototypes for my um, EPICS project which is a cart that will sanitize school supplies for one of the teachers near our um, near Peoria. So we're really excited to be working with our community partners and we're really excited to bring this to our community. Uh, we also do real world projects with City of Peoria and other business partners where we can work alongside engineers and follow their processes and see how they do things. Uh, and finally, another really unique thing about um, engineering at MET is our entrepreneurial mindset. So for engineering, that means being able to work on projects and work towards content that students care about, are curious about, and are passionate about. So to talk a little bit more about that, I have my peer, Joshua Laporta. Hi, I'm Josh. I'm a first year senior at the MET. And to start off with, any expectations I had coming into the engineering strand were completely blown out of the, wa out of the water um, through the course of the year. Uh, to start off with, Sylvia said it too, with the real world experiences where you can actually get a glimpse into what the engineering field is actually like, um, whether that be through our mentorship program or through guest speakers that get brought in from different fields in the engineering uh, field or other endeavors like a project, like the bridge project Sylvia was also talking about, where we were able to work side by side with City of Peoria engineers on a project they're working on right now, which is a pedestrian bridge across Grand Avenue. So we were able to do all, all the research and everything else and actually give a professional pitch to them and have our ideas heard. On the other side of it too with the projects, there's the learning aspect where we're able to take the concepts that we learn in class and actually apply them and visualize those concepts into our projects to help the understanding um, with our linear motion cars where we had to design and make a car that would go straight for a certain distance of time and that would ha that helped us con uh, conceptualize the kinematics that we were learning or with my epics project where I have to basically I'm working with a pizza local pizzeria to help redesign a pizza box to make it cost effective, eco friendly, and above all else, keep their pizza warmer for longer, right? So I'm able to apply some of the thermodynamics principles that we learned in class to that project to enhance it, right? And this is really why we do things here at the engineering strand and at MED as a whole, because we can work on those projects and everything else, and it helps conceptualize and deepen our understanding within the fields we're going into. And through you know just helping other people within the community whether it be through different projects or anything else and now i'm going to pass it over to my other co-student katana with the end technology strand hello i am katana ortiz a second year technology student and i will be talking to you today about what we do and what you will get to experience here at the met so in your first year you would have two class periods per semester four honor credits a year and receive 13 dual enrollment credits through Australia Mountain Community College. In your second year, you still have the two class periods 
your four honor credits a year and six dual enrollment credits. So going on to the left, some of the things you will have the opportunity to complete during your time at the Met are configuring and managing Windows and Linux operating systems at the local level as well as the server level. Um, another area we focus on is networks through the Intro to Networks course where you will get hands-on activities in the tech lab. You can also complete job shadows and possible internships with actual IT professionals. And, in, and all of this will culminate with the opportunity to compete in a national cyber competition called Cyber Patriots, where you are given real world scenarios where you have to patch holes in networks and operating systems. Next up, we have Robert Anderson. How's it going, everyone? My name is Robert Anderson. I'm a second year tech student here at the Met Professional Academy, and I'm here to talk to you guys about my why, you know, why Met. And over my first couple of years here at Met, um, my why has changed a lot. I chose Met originally just because it allowed me to play sports and specialize in technology. But just like you guys, I came to an open house and had my eyes open to what Met is all about. You know, the focus on the entrepreneurial mindset and the freedom to learn whatever you wanted to. Uh, it was like nothing I'd ever seen before. But when I first came down here in the basement, I could really feel the culture and family-like bond between everyone down here, whether that be medical, engineering, technology, and now bioscience. Um, that's what I love the most. And in that top left picture there, those are some friends that I made my first year here. And those are still people I keep in contact with. Some of them are even off in college, and they give me some insight into what I'm going to be learning when I go to that next step. These are kids that were driven to be successful and are super passionate about the stuff we learn down here in technology and our material. Um, and at the Met, every day is filled with limitless opportunities, with every day being something new. And that bottom left there, that's an American Express uh, red team pin tester who came in and taught us how to use Kali Linux and showed us Hack the Box, which was an online pin testing program. Uh, I use a lot of my knowledge here at the Met in so many different applications, but most recently, as Katana pointed out, it was Cyber Patriots. It's a competition thrown on by the Air Force, and it has a bunch, it's a big global event and with a lot of sponsors with, from multiple industries like Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and Embry-Riddle, just to name a few. But it put a lot of my technical skills that I learned down here to the test, working with Windows systems, Windows server systems, and Linux, and basic security practices. Um, at the Met, you have so much to do and so many choices to do and to choose from, whether that be epics, your coursework, or even internships. Uh, down at the bottom left there, or bottom right, sorry, Katana is working on an Arduino robot, uh, an Arduino robot that she picked up over at GCU on a field trip, and she wanted an introduction into microcontrollers, and this was the perfect opportunity for her to learn it, and will probably have an effect on her later down the line, down the line in her career. And now I'm going to pass it off to bioscience teacher Miss Coacher. Hi, I am Mrs. Kocher. I am the Bioscience and Innovations Instructor here at the Met. And we are unique at the Met because we are, an, we are a single year program. And so our uh, coursework is broken down by semester on this slide. So we are basically where biology and technology meet. We study a lot of DNA, a lot of the really tiny stuff that uh, you probably have heard the basics of, but maybe haven't dove in depth in. And so we really, really strive to get our students a lot of authentic lab experience, whether it's in our lab or whether they get to go out and work with their mentors uh, more specifically to what their mentors do. Uh, we also make a point to hold close connections with our business partners. A couple of them are listed on the slide, but they're not our only. Uh, we make a point to get our students connected with people who are actually doing these jobs actually working in the lab day in and day out and doing research that are making new discoveries in terms of prescription medicine, if they're interested in that, whether they are going down the forensics route or whether they are just interested in, you know, how we can genetically engineer different organisms. Um, so we really make a point to immerse students in a world that they probably have never seen. And so we really, really ask a lot of our students, but we have also this year added on that we are working with our other strands here at the Met and working with those EPICS projects. And so some of the students that talked about that ASU EPICS competition earlier, our students have taken on the challenge of joining them this year, and that's been really exciting to see how they can work with different mindsets 
and work together to solve a problem, bringing each of their expertise to the forefront of their project. And so all of that ends up leading to in the spring semester, they get to do a capstone project where they are really choosing what they want to study and the route that they want to go using what they've learned in their fall semester. And so I will turn it over to Carmen, who is one of our students that has completed our bioscience program, and she can give you a lot more detail of what it's like from a student perspective. Hi, everybody. My name is Carmen, and I'm a second year student here at the Met. I'm currently in our medical program, but last year I was actually a part of our first bioscience class. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience today. And so the first thing I want to touch on is what is the bioscience strand? I think that can be a little confusing because it's such a broad term, right? But I like to I like to describe the branch of MET um, as the convergence between new ideas, scientific development and foundations and technology. As Ms. Kocher was saying, we learn about the tiny things, DNA, genetics, all that stuff. And some of the more general topics we learn about are bioscience and its variety of applications to the community and healthcare, but along with things like forensics, research, and community applications. There are so many things that I got to do here that so many kids don't get to see until they're in college, their sophomore or junior year. I was taught how to use a lot of advanced laboratory equipment like PCR machines and electrophoresis chambers. And I realize those words sound big and scary now, but if you join bioscience, you're gonna get to learn how to use all of that. And we also got the opportunity to visit a bunch of amazing places like the ASU Biodesign Institute in Tempe, where they're always coming up with new technology and new ideas for our community, as well as TGen, who's actually one of our business partners. They're a genomics research institute, and they're doing a lot of amazing work with pancreatic cancer and um, vaccines, genetics, all that stuff. For me, the highlight of my time here in bioscience was our research project. So our class had to come up with a multi-month independent research project in our field of interest. And for everybody in our class, that meant something a little bit different, right? We had kids interested in environmental science, forensics, healthcare. For me, um, I'm really interested in cosmetic science. So I actually learned about how lactic acid that our body produces can affect the potential for breast implant illness in women with silicone breast implants. And you can see in the upper right hand corner, that's actually me with my mentor from last year from our mentorship program. Her name is Dr. Tersa Cortulo and she works for Arizona Dermatology. She actually helped me and guided me a lot with my research project. She actually got my breast implants for me so I could work on those in the lab. And it was such an amazing experience because a lot of kids don't get to like do hands on research until their junior or senior year of college. And I got to do it my junior year of high school, which is just invaluable. And touching on the mentorship program again, that was an amazing opportunity as well, because like I said, so many kids in bioscience are interested in different things and it is such a broad field. And so I was really able to narrow down my interests and what I'm really interested in rather than some kids who just go to college and they don't really know what they're interested in yet. So that was amazing. And um, here you can see in the upper left hand corner, that was my class. We got lab coats from the Cancer Treatment Center of, Center of America. And in the lower right hand corner, that's my friend Itzy. She's making an agarose gel, which again is something really cool you'll be able to do in our bioscience program. I think this is a really good fit for anybody who's interested in science and likes to uh, have a little bit more independence in their learning. If you like doing hands on activities and doing things that aren't just straight out of a textbook, they're actually applicable to the real world. I think this is an amazing program and I'm really grateful that I got to have the experiences that I did. Uh, that being said, I'm going to actually turn it over now to our technology and engineering teacher, Justin. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Justin Davis. I am the technology and engineering instructor here at the Met Professional Academy. And one thing that none of the students have touched on is our alumni network. Now, the reason why they haven't is because they're not alumni yet, but we do have a very strong and robust alumni network of students that are always willing to give back. And anytime we have situations where our current students need help, we can always rely on those alumni to step in and, and step up and help us out whenever need. And this happens to be one of those events where I mentioned that we're having an open house and a couple of them said, I'd really like to come and talk. So we gave them the opportunity. So first up, we have Kellen who graduated last year. Um, Kellen is an amazing student who worked really hard on a safer bot project here at the Met Professional Academy. I'll let him talk to you about that a little bit more, but he is a mechanical engineering major at ASU. So Kellen, take it away. 
Hello, everyone. As Justin said, my name is Kellen. Um, and I think Met has really helped me the most with just the opportunities it's been able, uh, it's given me. Uh, for at least my freshman year at ASU, it's helped me the most uh, by allowing me to take FSU 100, which is the introductory engineering course at ASU. It's allowed me to take that beforehand in my senior year of high school. And then I think that's really uh, opened up a lot of opportunities in terms of uh, classes. If I hadn't had that done already, I wouldn't be in the classes that I'm in right now. Um, and so I wouldn't be learning at the rate that I am at this point. Uh, I think it's also really helped me with uh, their involvement in EPICS. Um, this, the, with the EPICS I've done at MET, uh, it's really taught me how to speak to stakeholders, uh, get them involved, uh, how to apply for grants for my projects I'll be doing, and to work in a cohesive team and to lead a team. Uh, I think all in all, MET is uh, just a great opportunity for students to get a glimpse into the a possible career they want to go into uh, before they actually hit college. So they know when they go into college what they might be doing for the rest of their lives. Thank you. Thank you, Kellen. Um, that was insightful. Next up, we have someone by the name of Anson Hoffman. Now, Anson graduated last year as well, and Anson really excelled and took SOLIDWORKS to the next level here at the program. Um, so here's Anson. He is a mechanical engineering at ASU as well. So Anson, take it away. Hi there, everybody. My name is Anson Hoffman. I am a freshman at ASU studying mechanical engineering like my friend Kellen. And I'm a MET alumni from the engineering strand. Um, one of the things that I think a lot of people forget to mention when they talk about skills that they learn from MET is most likely time management. Almost all of the engineering and technology strand is completely based off of project style of learning. And let me tell you, that's something that is huge, especially in the engineering side of college. FSD 100 is an introductory course to engineering. And as Kellen said, we got the opportunity to take it here at MET. But the entire course is based off of an entire capstone project that lasts the entire duration of the semester. And you're graded weekly off of how you per, per, or off of how you per, like uh, progress throughout the project. Sorry, I totally lost the word there. But weekly you get graded on that sort of thing. And by the end, you're supposed to have a completed project. And the one that we actually did here in the Met was a rescue style aircraft. We legitimately have to design an aircraft all by ourselves. Aside from that, another thing that the Met actually provides a lot to us students is machine and software technology learning. And that was one of the things that just, Justin mentioned that I actually love SolidWorks. I've taken it as far as I can possibly get. And that picture up on the screen right there is me earning my certified SolidWorks professional license. And I had the opportunity to do that here at MET. I didn't actually have to do that in college on my own. And that was something that I was extremely grateful for because I put it on my resume. And now I have a job at the 3D Print Lab in ASU because of my experience with the 3D printers and SolidWorks here at MET. I also learned how to use laser cutters and many different kinds of tools. And that was all something that I included into my interview when I interviewed for the 3D Print Lab. And they were just really taken aback that they, that I had that sort of experience all while just graduating from high school. And so when you guys come here to MET, even if it's not in the engineering and technology strand, you guys have access to these amazing resources that can get you super far way ahead of anyone else in your age range. And I just think that that was really, really beneficial, especially for a person like me so passionate about engineering and 3D design. I got to do all of those sort of things way earlier than anyone else that I've met at college so far, and it's really set me aside from the curve. So, thank you. Thank you, Anson. Um, that was very insightful as well. Now, the next person we have up, um, I hold near and dear to my heart. I've only been at the Met Professional Academy for four years, and Adrian was one of my first students here at the Met Professional Academy in the technology strand. I can honestly say that I am not the teacher I am today without his help. Um, I would not be the teacher I am today without his help. We we really focus on where students lead and we take the students feedback to heart. And my first few years here, Adrian helped me immensely with becoming the teacher that I am today. And he jumped at the opportunity to come. So Adrian is majoring at GCU in IT. So Adrian, go ahead, take it away. 
Thank you for that, Justin. Uh, so Met has taught me that curiosity never dies and being able to question everything good or bad. Um, it has given me an interest in learning how things work and function. Um, it's also taught me that like you can accept failure and wanting to learn about how to do better for the next time that you try and repeat that task. And so and even though you failed, you can still repeat it and you know how to do better next time and make sure that you don't repeat those same mistakes or how to make those mistakes like have a lasting impact on you. Um, it's also benefited me that mock interviews, um, it's kind of taught me what to expect from the workforce and it's helped me in my current position. Um, I also gained communication skills from communicating with stakeholders and keeping a formal connection with my teachers and directors. Um, it's also helped me in the corporate environment being able to effectively communicate with my manager and customers, which has given me a leg up in my role and future roles. Um, I've also received a few certifications at MET during my time there, and these have helped me understand some of the applications that I use in my corporate role. Um, being able to use some of these prior to entering the workforce has been beneficial that I'm already ahead of the curve and demonstrating to my manager that I'm aware and ready to use these applications. Um, in my courses at GCU, even just last semester, I used a good amount of these applications and I start to remember bits and pieces from my certifications and I'd be able to kind of know how to do an assignment quicker than the professor was teaching it to us. So I've been very thankful for those. Justin, you're on mute. Sorry about that. I'm running of multiple things. Um, thank you, alumni. We really appreciate your help with everything you guys give back to the program. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Barb Coakley, um, our director. Well, she will close out the event. All right. Thanks so much, students, staff, and alumni. That was awesome. Um, hopefully, we shared some good information um, for those of you who are viewing this this evening. Um, if you're interested as a student in applying to the MET, here's how you do it. There's our application online on our website um, that you can complete electronically and turn into your counselor at your home school. Um, we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to see what our students are up to and what projects they're working on if you want to learn a little bit more about that. Um, look at our website to get additional information. And if you would like a MET student ambassador to reach out to you, just shoot me an email and um, we will get you matched up and we can set you up for a tour if you're interested. So we'd like to go ahead and open it up uh, for questions now to help answer um, any specific questions that you may have. Um, you can ask the students, the instructor, myself, alumni, any questions that you're interested in um and we will go ahead and answer those so um we have opened up the chat room hopefully everyone can see that it's the button next uh, to the left of the um, participant icon and um, we'll give you a few minutes if you want to uh, type in questions there and we will go ahead and field those as they come in So we're not seeing any questions on our end. Um, so hopefully you guys have uh, the feature available to you um, and you just don't have any questions. Um, we'll give it just another minute or so, um, but uh, if you do have a question, hopefully you're able to type it in. If I can ask a favor, um, I see we still have quite a few participants on. Even if you don't have a question, would you just type in, I can see the chat room, just so we know that it is possible and then we'll know we're done and there are no questions. 
um, if someone would just maybe type something in to the chat room just to let us know that you do have that feature available to you, that would be helpful for us. So not sure if the chat function isn't working. Justin, do you see anything on your end? No, I am not seeing anything. I'm I'm assuming that we're having technical difficulties with Teams. Okay. I apologize um, if that's the case. Um, what I'd like you to do, if you do have questions, please email those to me. That's my email right there on the screen, bcoakley at pusd11.net. Um, please send me your emails um, and I will go ahead and respond to those individually. I apologize. I'm not sure what's happening here. So thank you again um, for joining us this evening. Um, send us some emails if you have any questions. And again, um, there's a number of different ways uh, to move forward. Yeah, you can fill out an application if you're interested in coming in to do a tour send me an email and we can um, head that direction. So I hope everyone has a nice evening and thanks again for joining us.